This year marks the end of the 11-year history of CSGO. At times, dark and depressing, and at other times, cheerful and inspiring. Today, on the eve of the new year in 2024, in the beginning of the CS2 era, we decided to reminisce about the 10 key events in the history of CSGO. Let's go. First, CSGO Major. DreamHack Winter 2013 marked the inception of CS Majors and was far from perfect. The group stage took place in a cold venue, with some players even having to wear gloves. The final was played on a small stage more resembling a school auditorium. Moreover, CSGO itself was far from ideal at that time. However, Valve achieved a crucial milestone with this tournament, the initiation of the Major System, a concept that was later adopted by various games from Valorant to R6 Siege. The format proved to be viable. The tournament's prize pool was $250,000, and to raise this sum, developers employed a clever strategy. Just before the event, Valve released the Arms Deal update, introducing the first skins to the game. This move heightened the interest in CSGO, allowing the creators to boost their revenue. The release of the eSports 2013 case further contributed to gathering the necessary funds. Another Valve strategy involved dropping souvenir packages with in-game items for Counter-Strike Global Offensive during live match broadcasts. This tactic significantly increased the viewership of DreamHack Winter 2013. Players enjoyed the in-game perks, and top tournaments occurred more frequently, keeping the esports scene vibrant and enhancing the game's popularity. Valorant Release and Migration from CSGO in 2021, Counter-Strike stood as the undisputed king of tactical first-person shooters. Developers rarely updated the game and hesitated to enhance its esports aspects. Everyone turned a blind eye to this because, after all, there were no real competitors. However, in 2020, the landscape changed. The creators of the most renowned esports game, League of Legends, launched Valorant, the unspoken assassin of CS. Within a couple of months, this new shooter indeed carved out a significant portion of Counter-Strike's audience, including professional players. Hey everyone, Hans from Cloud9 here, and today I'm going to be officially announcing that I will be pursuing Valorant over Counter Strike. Esports athletes hurriedly migrated to Valorant, aiming to familiarize themselves with the new game faster than others. As a result, the American CS Tier 2 scene effectively faded away, and Counter Strike found itself a worthy contender. E League on TV for a long time, esports was confined to online streams of matches. The introduction of broadcasts on television channels seemed to have little purpose, as video game competitions were still of interest to a much narrower audience compared to traditional sports. However, in 2016, the TBS channel took a risk and created its own Counter-Strike League, E-League. This summer on TBS, the next big thing is here. In the first season of the tournament, the world's top teams competed for a prize pool of $1.4 million, the largest in the discipline. Matches were held directly in the TBS studio and broadcast on the channel every Friday. Even Shaquille O'Neal participated in promoting the league, appearing in several commercials. Hi, I'm Shaquille O'Neal, part owner of NRG. When it comes to Counter-Strike and E-League, I wanted to get deep deep into the game. This marked the first significant foray of esports beyond its usual audience, as millions of television viewers learned about video game competitions. Longest win streak. 87. That's the number of consecutive maps won at LAN tournaments by the Swedes from NIP, establishing the most dominant winning streak in the history of esports. The team was among the first to transition to the new version of the game, from CS 1.6 to CS GO, and quickly became the best in the world. Yes, at that time, the Swedes didn't face serious competition in the CS scene, but that doesn't diminish the extraordinary value of this achievement. No one even came close to such a massive win streak. Although there were contenders, Liquid in 2021 and phase in 2023, NIP won 19 tournaments in a row, but their dominance was broken quite unexpectedly. VP twice beat NIP at SLTV Star Series 5 Finals. Great turn of events. Adrian with a triple kill. It's all on exist. Is he loses this one round, and that's going to be it. 16 14. They lose the first map versus Pro, the first team in history to beat NIP on land. I buy power ban. 
We have already covered this story in one of our old videos, so here we will explain why this event became so significant for the history of CSGO. Firstly, it was the first Valve ban in CSGO for match fixing. Secondly, the ban players were not just typical tier 3 match fixers, they played in majors and were the second best team in NA. And some esports enthusiasts considered players like Swag as the main talents of the region. Swag pushing up the middle, but look at all the angles he has to cover here. Looking for the kill, turns around, great shot on Flusher, goes for JW, gonna pick him off as well. Great round from Swag so far. Now a one on two and Swag, oh my God. Thirdly, the severity of the punishment. All players except Ska received permanent bans, which were canceled in 2021. None of the banned players managed to make a full comeback to the pro scene. Olaf Boost the short explanation of Olaf Boost, Fnatic players discovered a method that was practically impossible to prohibit, as the player could see opponents through textures, and it was challenging to detect. From a rule perspective, this boost was not officially sanctioned, as the use of bugs allowing sight through textures is prohibited. It's worth noting that the view available from this point could give CTs a complete advantage, as they could see whether Ts were planning to go to point B or preparing for an event at A. In the quarterfinals of DreamHack Winter Major 2014, on the third map. Playing against Team LDLC, Fnatic managed to win only three rounds. After this, they switched to CT and lost the first round. Then, on the verge of elimination from the tournament, the Swedes used their secret weapon, the boost. He sees them down there, straight headshot, they have no idea. Smith's looking confused and dazed, and there's gonna be a follow-up headshot on the this way, they won all subsequent rounds and secured victory with a score of 16 to 13. No chance at all. Fnatic, they make their way to the semis of another major tournament here. Pronax with a final kill. 16-13. The French contested the decision on this boost. The judge's verdict was to replay the second half of Overpass. Fnatic disagreed with this decision and withdrew from the tournament, with LDLC winning the major. Following this incident, the Swedish player who used the boost received interesting nicknames, such as Boostmeister, and the map received an alternative name, D. Olaf Pass. Astralis Era the era of Astralis began in the spring of 2018. In the second half of the season, they won 9 out of 11 tournaments, including London Major. They secured second and third places in the remaining two. Astralis became so successful due to its innovative approach. The team incorporated a professional psychologist, a dietitian, and a sports conditioning coach. The organization ensured a structured daily routine for players, which each required to get no less than 8 hours of sleep per day. In terms of tactics, the Danes also changed the game. Before them, everyone played using several basic tactics and preferred to react based on shooting. Astralis, on the other hand, acted differently. Players tried changing NVIDIA rendering settings, were the first to use the radar during smoke dispersal, and thoroughly studied the mechanics of smoke in the game. In 2019, the Danes continued to play incredible CS. They won both majors in the season, but throughout the year, declines began, and in the summer, the team even relinquished leadership to Liquid. Symbolically, the era of Astralis ended in early 2020. At that time, Navi destroyed them in the semifinals of Katowice, with a devastating score of 16-5 on two maps. The outcome of the two-year era, 121 weeks at the top of the HLTV rating, 3-1 majors, and a revolution in the approach to the game. Kjellivak. Another story we covered in a different video. Kjellivak's act infuriated the community not just because he cheated, but because he possibly did it at a major. Like the I Buy Power players, he got a second chance in 2017, but his level of play was not up to par. Interestingly, Kjellivak might be the only player in the world with a VAC ban who received an invite to the CS2 beta. And before we continue, we'd like to remind you that you can support our channel financially. You can do this via Patreon or PayPal. All the details can be found in the description below this video. Simple the player of the decade in CSGO. One day, a legendary movie will undoubtedly be made about the Ukrainian Oleksandr Simple Kostilya, as he has left an indelible mark on the entire esports scene by playing CSGO exceptionally well. Analyzing his highlights is nearly impossible, because more often than not, they defy any logical analysis. He could single-handedly turn the tide of a match for his team, racking up an astonishing number of kills. Simple is watched by the entire world. Matches are tuned in for him in America, Asia, and Europe alike. In simpler terms, 
he is the best player in FPS games in the entire history of esports. Moreover, Simple is an extremely interesting personality. He has transformed from toxicity and racist insults to philanthropy and universal admiration. Although Simple is currently on a hiatus from the professional scene, we are confident that he will make a comeback and show all the haters that there is no difference between CSGO and CS2. Navi won the major. An awesome conclusion to Navi's era in 2021. After a full replacement of Flamey with Bit, the Born to Win won almost all Tier 1 tournaments, the most significant of which was the PGL Stockholm Major, the only major in the history of CSGO with a prize pool of $2 million. Navi were the main favorites of the Major, simple in unreal form. Bit, the main headshot machine of the team, and other players performing exceptionally. Navi lined up to the analyst's expectations, not losing a single map at the major. This is how Simple won his only major in CSGO. That's all for today. What event did we forget to mention? Write about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Good game.